Happy Saturday, everybody. I'm making myself a pattern for a Muskogee uh, Ikovka. It'd be a breech cloth. So this is more Muskogee style. This is more general Southeastern style. And this one's actually going to be shorter. I've, I've got some Uchi ancestry. That's kind of my excuse for why I'm going to make a, a square one. I might even make that one first just because it'll be easier. But we'll see. I really want to do this one because this is Muskogee style. Uh, what makes it Muskogee, you know, and that's both Creek and Seminole specifically, is that it's got the whole point. It still flattens, but sometimes they have little ribbons hanging off the edge. They always have some kind of ribbon along the, along the entire edge to kind of, I don't know if it's protect your skin or just protect the wool fabric itself from coming apart. Um, I've seen X patterns. I've seen circle and, and U-shaped patterns and all kinds of weird stuff. So there, there's a lot of different examples. And uh, this, <clears throat> the one I'm basing this off of has an X here, although the whole thing is a bit narrower. I'm making this wider because I'm a big dude. Um, theirs has a bar right here and um, a slash right here, but not the other slash here. But it does have these little, you know, little guys right here. So, um, basically this goes from like the top of my belt down to like just past my knee. This goes top of my belt, buckle in the front to just above the belt in the back. And then that right there is a copy of that over there. So, and this one is basically a generic template of the same except not not tapered so anyways that'll be red it'll have blue ribbons on the edge um this one will probably be blue as it's an earlier uh, it'll be kind of an earlier style it might have some some red lines or something in, in it or maybe along the edge but uh this is going to be yeah it's going to be blue maybe, maybe indigo blue with with red because that's what we were wearing in the 1800s, all throughout the 1800s. Although by the uh, time the Okima stickballers of the 1920s were being photographed, you had like all these crazy different designs on the front of these. And um, it looked like they were even using yellow ribbons. I know that some type of yellow or silvery looking uh, ribbon was used on some of these probably in the late 1800s, early 1900s. But like earlier on, they, they probably would have used more indigo. So anyways, um, I might do yet another earlier style. That's, I mean, there's some even from that same time period that are actually blue with like a, some other color ribbon. So it just kind of depends on the person. I don't know what the significance is of the designs. Um, I think that they looked cool. And so people kind of did whatever worked. Like I've seen one that has like an X across all of it and then like a bar in the middle. And I've seen just so many different designs. Some that like on the back of it, it's like, it's like X, 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 X. And, and they're crisscrossing through each other. So most of them are red wool. That's what's the most common thing between all of them is that most of them are red wool. So um, I don't want to read too much into whether the symbolism in each of these. I know that when it came to, like, say, Osceola's uh, pre-existing bandolier bag with all the um, with all the beadwork on it, apparently the beadwork was, uh, according to the museum that has it, the beadwork represented, like, the shape of mouths in, in his case. And, uh, again, that one, that one particular bandolier bag does not look like any of the ones that show up in the paintings of him. So I don't know 100% if it's actually his or not. could be, but... Um, that's the only instance where I, that's the only reference I've heard where the symbol on any of this, any of these you know, articles of clothing actually represents something specifically because you have chevron and diamond patterns on the, on like the bandolier, um, sash, um, as well as on, um, like the garters for the leggings. So, uh, I don't know, I don't know particularly if there's any actual significance between that, you know, or regarding that. But, but I've been inspired by Mike Berryhill, the late great Mike Berryhill, to to kind of do this. This is kind of more the same style of his, although with different you know pa uh, different you know designs. But uh, the overall shape of the two you know these hanging off, and this going like maybe just below my kneecap, things like that. And that's more common the way he did his kit. And I plan on doing a whole lot more stuff. Probably buckskin leggings, although cloth would be nice. Um, 
probably go with a regular like white mountain man shirt for the time period that looks kind of the same as <laughs> some some of the portraits that are out there um you know uh i'll make my own nickel silver gorgets and got a cold steel tomahawk i'm gonna go ahead and do some off well i ordered that i'm gonna do some modifications on it make it look more period and yeah just do some cool stuff like that um Probably go with buckskin for the leggings, just because it'll actually be easier, even though it's more expensive. Uh, it'll also look pretty awesome. They'll all look pretty awesome. Uh, make some pucker toe moccasins. And yeah, I don't know if any of these things, if any of this style of clothing's actually, you know, survived in terms of a living lineage. Uh, if it does, it's probably through the stick ballers and maybe through the uh, stomp grounds. Um, I think there's some dances, I know at least in the early 80s, late 70s, whatever it was, when these uh, Greenleaf Town um, really ceremonial grounds had some videos that had uh, some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> um, great, because that's actually my grounds, and that I've never been to. <sighs> but, yeah, I think some of the guys had uh, some type of breech cloth. I know that, you know, if you're wearing shorts and you're wearing something like this over it, you're probably wearing like a some string or rope around your waist and then you have like basically just the apron part not the not the part under the crotch so it's not really an article of clothing so much as like just an apron <laughs> on the front and back but uh some are doing it right some are just doing it to look like they're kind of being more historical but i don't know how how much of this has survived so i'm doing this based on i'm making my own pattern based on my own you know, dimensions and what I'm seeing in uh, photographs from museums of these historical examples. And I'll make one of those examples the, um, the icon for this video, and I'll go ahead and, and put a link in the description to where you can find, um, I can't remember the name of the museum, but, but where you can find images of all these different uh, breech cloths. And also you can find other stuff, like some of the sash belts, and some of the, uh, the tomahawks and all that great stuff. So uh, yeah, Mike, Mike Berryhill definitely um, has inspired me in some ways long after his passing. And um, I'd like to make some bows after his family method. Um, him trying to keep the word culture stuff, you know, around I think is great. And trying to reconstruct some of that as I realized he was doing. And um, but also teaching the lineage of his, uh, his family's bow making method. Uh, I've got nothing but respect for that guy. I wish he was still with us. But, um, but oh, Mike, for everything he did. But, but yeah, um, if I don't make this one right away, it'll be this. This will exist as a template in case this one gets damaged along the way. I'll have this. I can always just make another one, I suppose. But I do want to make a square one after the Yuchi pattern and. Uh, yeah, a lot of the tribes in the southeast wore the same stuff, like the same type of leggings, same type of moccasins, for the most part, with some slight differences in the moccasins. And, um, but yeah, the breech cloths were kind of different. So the Ichi wore the square ones, the Creeks and the Seminole wore the uh, pointed ones. I don't know about the uh, Chata and Chickasaw. I think the Cherokee had more of the square type. So I have to kind of double check some of the stuff, but I know the Ichi had the square. I know the Muscogee people had this. So. Definitely want to make some of this stuff for me. And, uh, you know, I think it's pretty awesome stuff. So I, I gotta, I gotta buy needles and thread and all that kind of stuff. My mom has tons of, but, uh, <laughs> I'm not near her, so I can't use her stuff. And she probably wouldn't want me to anyway. Well, she might now that she's, you know, kind of old and up there, but she used to hate when I would play with her needles when I was a kid. I would, um, try to use them to make Wolverine claws for my X Men action figures. But uh, she wasn't too fond of that. <laughs> I still have some of that stuff too. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll do that. So what I'll have to do probably for this is um, each of these ribbons will be twice the size, and I'll have to fold them in the back, and then like you know stitch it on. Um, that way, there's no like you know rough edge sticking out, things like that. Um, again, this will be twice the size, you know. Actually, be more than that. It'll probably be four. This will probably be four times the size. One is going to fold underneath and then go over and then go over and then go underneath. So I got to think about all that stuff now because 
I need to have enough of the right ribbon. And the ribbon would have been of, of probably cotton, although some might have used silk. Um, generally, these you know these cloths were made out of you know the base material is wool, red wool. You go back to the 1700s, they were using more blue for um, the the leggings and the uh, cloths. So breech cloths, breech clouts, breech clout. I think is more the historical proper historical term for it. So, anyways, but yeah, uh, in English, is Muskogee be um, you know uh, Ikovka. So. Um, Anyways, let me know what you guys think. I'd like to see more of this stuff out there. I've, I'm indebted to not just you know Mike Berryhill, but also um, yeah, and of course the museum, which I can't remember the name of. I'll, I'll again link in the description. But um, also Native Tech has inspired me over the years. I I go back to them constantly when I'm curious about this stuff because they have stuff on leggings, breech cloths, bucker toe moccasins. Which I'm, I see more Creek and Cherokee people m making on YouTube these days, the Pucker Tomox. But um, Native Tech also has things on like beading and, and, and with the paint represented, you know, war paint, all this type of stuff. They, they did a tremendous amount of research. And um, the problem is the website looks the same as it did back in like 2007. They need to seriously update it and have pictures of their. Um, of some of these finished products and maybe some actual pictures of patterns themselves. I think that'd be really awesome. But um, until that happens, it's up to others like myself and hopefully others more qualified to do exactly what I'm doing right now. The next video on the subject will actually be this, but complete. Or at least, um, at least with the red fabric cut out, even if the blue ribbons are not attached yet. So most likely I'll just go ahead and do a video showing the entire finished product because uh, that'll make the most sense. It'll probably be in this one. It may not be in this one just yet, or it could be either or, depending on which one I decide to do. I'll probably buy the fabric for both of them at the same time just because I do want to have a, you know, some variation. So, and the truth is I might even narrow this whole thing down a little bit. Technically, the one this is based off of should be a little more narrow, but I'm a big guy. I don't want it to look like it's too narrow. Um... Same with this guy, like this could be like, this is about 11 inches wide. This here is about 10 and a half. I actually trimmed that one down a little bit. So, uh, but we'll, but in any case, we'll, we'll show you the final result. Once I've had a chance to make it, try it on, things like that, I'll do another video showing it all laid out. And uh, what I'll end up doing is I'll, I'll actually do the front of it first. I'll cut the shape of the front first. And then I'll decide if I need to cut more off the back end. Because the front is going to be what the front's going to be. And if I need to, like, you know, shorten it here, that's what's going to happen. It'll, it'll basically shorten here, and that'll that'll be taken off the other end. And then the other end will be cut in accordance with this end. So, but uh, all that for another day. Let me know what you guys think, and I will uh, chat with you guys again soon. But oh.